Hey guys, welcome to video number three in the series, How to Use Harmer. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the filters and the filters only, because the resonance section on this synth specifically is a little bit more in depth than you might realize. So a dedicated video just to the resonance section is gonna be coming after this one. So let's get started and dive into this. So let's go to our default and let's select a default to make sure it's a, a default patch. So we're gonna be focusing on this filter section right here. So we're gonna be talking about the frequency knob, the width, keyboard tracking, envelope, this tiny little adapt button, the octave hertz switch, and then all the different types of uh, filters that you have available to you. So first things first uh, that we should kind of understand is how these filters work and how they run in different forms and parallel serial, that whole thing. So. When you look at it as a default, this knob down here is gonna be pointing straight down with the green side on the right hand side. What that means is that filter one is gonna process your signal and then it's gonna spit that out and then it's gonna go down over to filter number two. It's gonna process that filtered signal and then go to the output. So if that doesn't make sense, let's do a little demonstration of that. We have a basic saw wave. So let's shave off the top end here. So we just have that. Now for filter number two, let's go to a phaser. It's kind of a very uh, noticeable effect. So we can see just by that, now our top end is shaved off here and our filter, uh, the phaser is applied. So it goes through filter number one and then it spits out that and it goes to filter number two and then that's what we hear. So if we alt click this and we go just to the top, that's basically just gonna be using filter number one and ignoring number two completely. The opposite of that is all the way down to the left, down to the bottom, and that's just gonna be filter two, ignoring number one. Okay, that makes sense so far. But then we notice there's also a little wiggle room on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. What are those things? So on the left side, if we go to 50% here, it's going to process filter number one, and then it's, gonna, it's also gonna process independently filter number two, and then those two filters are gonna be combined to what we hear. So your signal's going through one, and it's also going through number two, and then they combine, and like I said, that's what you hear. So that makes sense as well. This one on the right is kind of, Kind of tricky to wrap your head around a little bit. So what this is doing when it's all the way to the right is basically saying filter number one is processing your signal and then that's going to the output. But also it's going to filter number two and then that's going to the output and those are summed and that's what we hear. So it's kind of kind of confusing. This is a, let's do another demonstration like we did before. So if it's at the top, that's just filter one, that, that high, that little uh, low pass that we didn't shave off the top, right? But we also have the phaser still applied down here. So if we do this and go 50%, it's almost combining them in an interesting way, which is different than on the left. So I'd highly suggest to kind of play around with this knob because once it, once you kind of really get used to it and, and understand it, it's really cool how you can do different types of effects with this uh, with this knob. And as we go through the different shapes, we're going to be using this to kind of demonstrate how we can use that in a, in a practical sense. So let's go to default and let's go to default patch and let's start talking about our different shapes here. So if you open up this list and you can also scroll through this with your mouse wheel if you want to once you get super fast at things. So let's look at this list. So it's it's kind of organized in a methodic way. It may not look like it, but it is. So these first four are gonna be kind of a softer, softer curves, and then these are gonna be a little bit harder, and then these are gonna be much more hard. So let's go over here to our classic low pass. And let's put this here in the middle. So this is gonna be what that curve does. Let's go to the next bank, and let's go to the low pass, the crude low pass. And we can see that's a little bit more harsh there. And then the next one, the hill low pass, that's gonna be a little bit harsher too. And then after that, there's all different kinds of different versions of different low passes, like the leg low pass. It's a little bit different. And then we have the hybrid low pass. A little bit different. And then the snake one, this one's kind of cool actually. It's almost like, uh, like a band stop, small little band stop with a tight width that's kind of going where the resonance would kind of go. Very cool effect there. And then we have another version of a low pass, the fin low pass. And then the leaky low pass. So this one's kind of interesting. So all the way at the top, let's, uh, let's watch where this one work. So it does this normal low end, uh, or cutting off the top end, the low pass, thing what it normally does, 
but it's also kind of forgetting about a lot of the higher harmonics. And you might think that's a cool effect, but man, the uh, those extra harmonics are still a little bit too harsh. So this is a section where we would want to use this routing. So luckily this knob is already in the position that we want it to be. So filter one is going to go into filter two. Now let's select leaky low pass again and kind of shave that off. So we still have that same effect going on, but now the top uh, harmonics are a little bit less annoying than they were before. So that's kind of a practical way to use both filters uh, simultaneously. So filter one going into filter two and then to our ears. So let's go to our default again, reset everything back to normal. Now let's talk about some of the other shapes here. So we have the classic bandpass. which basically just lets a portion of our uh, of our signal through depending on where we put this knob. And this works also very well with our width knob. This is a good point to introduce this one. So as we see when we move this around, these lines are kind of thick, right? They, there's, there's a good chunk of meat right here. But as we change this downwards, it's going to tighten that up a little bit. And it's going to narrow it down. Whereas the opposite way, if we put it kind of almost at the top, it's just a gigantic band pass. So that's another another uh, knob we can really adjust that bandwidth there for different types of filters. And that works for all of them. So like for a band stop, for example, it's going to kind of cut a certain section. Kind of sounds like a phaser because it's kind of phasing. And as we change this width knob, you can see it's almost barely visible. It's very tiny. But then if we bring this up here, it's a lot thicker here, so there's a lot of stuff getting rejected. Next up, we have our classic high pass, which is the opposite of a low pass. So we're kind of shaving off the low end. And this is a good way to kind of dial that in here. Because you see how sharp that is. And it's also easy to see on the low pass. You can see how sharp this is against the black background and against our harmonics here, and even on really all our views. And as we bring this up here, it kind of smears it, it blurs it up a little bit so it's not as sharp. So that's a very interesting one to, uh, to work with. So let's go to default again and talk about some other stuff. So we have our, let's go to classic low pass, for example. Or no, no, actually, let's go to a hill low pass. It's a little bit sharper. So next we're going to talk about keyboard tracking. So our KB track is this labeled here. So that's basically going to change the ratio of where the cutoff is on your filter based upon what note you're playing. So let's alt click this, or first, first let's, let's shave some stuff off here. So no matter what notes we play, this area here is, is where the cutoff is. Because anything above that is going to be cut off. But if we alt click keyboard tracking to 100%, let's go from low to high. We can see that the higher we go, the more the filter opens up and it stays at a constant ratio here. So the filter and the cutoff are actually moving as you move your key. So it's kind of cool that it stays in that ratio. And then you can adjust the strength of that, how much of that effect you want. And you can, when you all click it, it goes to 100%, but you can also go to 200%. And then it also works in the reverse way. So let's go down to negative 100%. And as we go up, we're going to see the filter starts cutting off, like choking off a little bit more. Almost to the point where we can probably get to a sine wave. Yeah, so now it turns into a sine wave at that spot. And as we go lower on the pitch, it introduces more harmonics. And then we can go really crazy, negative 200%, which is just an overpowered version of 100. And then it just kind of stops there. So that's what that does in a nutshell. Very cool feature. Let's put this, turn this off here. And let's go back to default to talk about some other of these filter shapes. So a couple special ones here. So we have, we talked about the leaky low pass. The phaser ones are actually very cool. So, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Makes things look really crazy. And you can change the width. Make it a very tight phaser. 
or kind of a large, bigger one. And then next up here, we have the band phaser. Which is kind of like the same thing as the phaser, but you can see some of these are more accented. Some of these are a little bit more unaccented, I guess, and then so on and so forth. Then we have a flat band pass, which is just another version of a band pass. And as you can see, with that width all the way down, we can really get into almost individual harmonics. Even at that stage there. So you really can just band pass to one harmonic, which then becomes your fundamental. So very interesting. So next up, this is a really cool part too, because you have two custom shapes. So now with this window, you can click this here and it'll bring you this graph. Now you can create your own filter how you want to see it. So if you drag this far point and bring this down, maybe adjust this curve a little bit, and now we have our own low pass. With our width control. And we can do a lot of crazy different shapes. You know, we can kind of do something almost like, almost like a little section here. This, like a band stop, but not entirely. And we can see that accented there as well. Which is kind of almost like what the le leaky low pass did. It was, it was probably something, if I were to guess, it was probably something like this. We had the kind of frequencies going there. Or some of the low end still going. It's still a low pass, but you're leaving a little bit of the higher harmonics there. Which is here. It's actually pretty close. That's actually probably a little bit higher. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah, so in this shape, in this envelope here, you can totally create whatever crazy wacky filter you want to do. And it's cool to uh, to kind of spend some time in here because a lot of synths and a lot of making the sounds really cool is a lot of it's really about the filter at the end of the day. Oh, it's on leaky. Here we go. Put some unison on that bad boy. Or even some keyboard tracking. So definitely a lot of cool stuff to play with here. So let's go back to our default. And a couple other things that we want to uh, to look at. We looked at all these here. I believe we did. Yes, we did. Um, but feel free to spend a lot of time in this section here because really tailoring in your filter is really what's going to really bring out your sound. I think personally, the effects and stuff is cool. It comes later and really adds the icing on the cake. But if you start with a good oscillator, a good uh, waveform, and then you have a really nice filter methodically kind of thought out, then everything else kind of becomes easier after that. So let's talk about this octave and hertz thing. It's easier to demonstrate. So if we go to our pitch here, this is kind of what we're used to hearing. But if we hear octaves, it sounds very strange. And we can see it on our EQ here. It's just a different way to add the, uh, technically this, these would be partials now because they're not necessarily multiples, like, or they might be, I don't know. But anyway, it's very different. It's not necessarily musical, so we'll go for Hertz. So these switches are kind of all over and that's what they refer to is, is basically the weighting of those harmonics. So let's go back down here, here to Hertz, to a regular saw wave. Now for this, this is kind of telling how the filter is going to react. And I think it's a little bit easier to see on a high pass. And they start default on octave. So it's kind of subtle, but it's definitely there. It's an option that's there for you. And like I said, feel free to experiment in this section because this is one of the most important sections of any synthesizer is the filter section. So let's go to our default once again and let's talk about the env or the envelope and this adapt button here that's connected to the envelope with this tiny little uh, little line here. So this envelope is going to tell, uh, let's say, go to low pass, 
and let's right click this here and go to edit articulators. Now we're brought into the filter one frequency, which is this knob, and we're going to make an envelope for it. So let's turn this on and let's turn it on tempo because I like to see the numbers and all that whatnot. So let's drag something kind of like this, something kind of just going all the way down to the bottom in a straight line. You can always alt click that little center piece to get, get it back to default. So it's functioning how you would how you'd imagine. And this envelope is on all the way by default. But if we want this to influence this uh, this envelope here a little bit, that's where we drag this away. Now, if this is at zero, uh, this envelope is not necessarily going to have any effect. Like, it's cool, it's there, but there, it's not getting any information from this envelope filter. And then if we go all the way backwards, it sounds like it's off, but it's really doing it in reverse. So if we go all the way up here, when we put this knob or this node all the way up to the top, it's doing the same thing as it was before. So it's basically an inversion of that. Let's go all the way back to the right and let's go all the way back to the downwards here. Back where we started. And so this adapt little button here. So this basically says that depending on your lower notes and on your higher notes, this envelope is going to try to sound more consistent through all your notes if this is on. So a little example here, let's turn this off. Let's play some low and high notes. So that's kind of the difference of what that's going to sound like. I would generally probably recommend to keep this on, but that's just a suggestion. Feel free to change that or keep it off if you'd like to. And yeah, I believe that uh, that covers everything I we should have talked about here for the filter section. Uh, so for some homework, if you're playing with Harmer and you're interested in it, try to draw a really cool custom shape or a really custom filter if you really want to. That would be a really fun thing to do because you can spend a lot of time in there and just really hone in what type of wacky filter you want to do. Even if you want to do something, let's let's do something strange here. So let's go to let's go to stairs. Let's see what this is gonna sound like. And then maybe for the high end, let's go for a let's see. Let's go for a wave. Something kind of like that. All right, let's take off our uh envelope here uh, custom shape one let's go back to our envelope here or uh, filter shape let's see if this do a little bit uh wow that's gonna be crazy And that's just weird. That's not really any thought going into this filter specifically, but definitely, definitely mess around in that. That's a very fun spot. And uh, look forward to the next video, which is going to be talking about this resonance because there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. You got your resonance shapes in here and all that, uh, different offsets, self oscillating oscillator, if that makes any sense. And you also have a width, and we're going to come to that as well, and also some custom shapes. So. If you'd like to maybe dive into that before the video comes out and kind of mess around with it, try to break it or something. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you learned something from it or if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and a comment. Let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.